This final video is going to look at a little bit around the importance of buffers in natural systems. And it's good for you to have uh, a number of different examples that you can use in order to describe and apply the use of buffers to different natural systems. So one natural system that we can talk about is human blood. Now the pH of human blood is usually around about 7.4. But one of the important things that's happening to blood is the rise and fall of carbon dioxide levels. Now, even if you don't um, study biology as well as chemistry, you would know, I'm sure, from your junior days that um, carbon dioxide is a very important byproduct of respiration. It is something that is produced in all of the body's cells um, because it is part of the process of producing energy. It's also exchanged in the lungs so that the carbon dioxide leaves the body through the uh, diffusion across the walls of the alveoli uh, and leaves every time we exhale. So there are places in the body where the concentration of carbon dioxide is higher um, and there is a diffusion gradient created as the carbon dioxide moves from a place of high concentration to lower concentration. And um, the same thing, there are places in the body where the concentration of carbon dioxide is quite low. The problem with carbon dioxide is that uh, inter when it interacts with the liquid part of the blood, the plasma, there's a lot of water in there and therefore we can actually get weak carbonic acid, this acid here. Um, is a product of the reaction between carbon dioxide and water. Of course, the other thing that we know about carbonic acid and also carbon dioxide and water is that we have a, an interaction which involves hydrogen ions or, or protons. So what we have here is the carbonic acid in the second of the reactions that you can see is the uh, carbonic acid which is a weak acid and it's in equilibrium with uh, hydronium ions or protons and the um, hydrogen carbonate, sometimes referred to as the bicarbonate ion. So this is well, fine and good, but what's the actual consequence of all of this? Well, the problem is that increasing carbon dioxide, so if we have an increase in carbon dioxide, then what's going to happen is that the equilibrium is going to shift to try and use that. By using that, it's going to push it in this direction, which is going to increase the concentration of the um, hydrogen ions, and therefore it's going to make the pH fall. Whilst we're looking for a goal of around 7.4, if it starts to fall below 7.4 at around, we start to call it a, a, a condition known as acidosis. And uh, beyond about 6.8, uh, there are very serious consequences, including potential death as a result of this fall of pH in the blood. So there's, whilst the, there is an optimal pH, there is also a range beyond which the body system just cannot cope. So, um, and likewise, if we talk about drops in carbon dioxide, then the shift may occur in the opposite direction. The um, concentration of H plus ions will fall and therefore we'll get a condition known as alkalosis, which is um, too high a pH. And as it rises up into these higher values, it becomes just equally as much of a problem. So therefore, it's very important that we have this buffer in the blood to try and ensure that any changes that are occurring are counted so that we can try and maintain a stable pH.